What's up everybody, it's Snitch here, uh, bringing you a patch review for patch 0.3.1. 0 0.3.0 0 .3 .0 was only a few days ago, so it's very impressive to see Strange Matter already getting started on pushing faster patches. This patch is really, really big, features a lot of changes to tank itemization, as well as some rearrangement of support items, and just a lot of big impacting things on the game, as well as a big nerf to our favorite man, Severog. So, let's take a look. So here we are, 0 0.3.1. Uh, so, gameplay starts with a big initial change. Raptor spawn time has been updated from 10 minutes to 8 minutes. Personally, I don't see much reason for this change, so it leads me to believe that they're just kind of like throwing out a left field. This change is just to see what happens. Like, what happens if Raptors are 8 minutes instead of 10 minutes? It's early access. Let's just see what it does. So I think this change is a bit kind of uh, not necessary. Maybe it speeds up the game quite a bit. I assume it does, because, you know, if Raptors are being contested at 8 minutes instead of 10 minutes, it's uh, definitely going to speed up the spawn timers, and there's one at 13 instead of 15, you know, obviously the game will get quite a bit faster. I think, uh, I'm not sure I personally like this direction, because I already feel like raptor fights are a bit chaotic, because nobody really has any items, and because of the strength of completed items, it, uh, makes it very awkward to kind of, like, teamfight at raptors, because everybody's just running around with, like, <laughs> base damage. So I feel like lowering the spawn time isn't something I really enjoy, but I'm down to give it a try, and I'm sure they just want to see how it'll work. Uh, starting with bug fixes, adding a missing voice, announcer of taking the prime helix, that's nice. I've definitely had instances where they've taken Prime and it hasn't said anything, so I assume that's what it's fixing. Uh, fix an issue is calling some abilities not enemies at a tower. Thank God, Gideon was a mess right now, <laughs> so it's very nice to see that they've already fixed this one. Uh, fix an issue is causing instant death due to selling health items. Uh, I know Ethereo has had a problem with this, so he'll be glad to see this change. He's died recalling multiple times because he's been in the shop and he's just instantly died. Uh, a fix on Eldritch Flame that makes passive work currently. I think this is really good. Uh, I know at least when I've been streaming, I've been having problems with Eldr Eldritch Flame getting work done, and it's just seemed like the passive isn't working at all. So I assume this is addressing this. I'll definitely be able to try and this item again in this patch and see if it makes an impact, especially with the uh, reduction in magic resist. We'll find out later in the patch. Definitely feels like Eldritch Flame could be working a lot better if it's very consistent now. Uh, Goblin Glue, VFX that I played correctly. Goblin Glue is a really cool item. I think its visuals just weren't very clear, so I'm very excited to see how this works. Uh, I think it was definitely a problem with the terrain or something, it was making it not appear properly, so we'll see if anybody's building Goblin Glue and we'll just <laughs> see what it looks like. I think uh, hopefully it looks really cool. You could see what it's happening because then maybe we'll make other people building it and it'll, you know, kind of snowball it into being a more regularly chosen item because I think it's one of the cooler items in the shop and it has a very unique active um, in that regard. Uh, mana Muzzle, they fixed an issue was causing Mana Muzzle to not break the spell shield from Warlock's Aegis. This is a really nice change. It was definitely problematic that Mana Muzzle would not work on Aegis, but it wouldn't break Aegis. It felt like uh, it wasn't sure if it was meant to do it or if it was going to go through and no one really knew. So it's nice that they defined how it's actually meant to work now. Uh, Matter Limiter's passive now works correctly. I didn't know this was a problem, but glad to see that they're already, you know, identifying these bugs. Plasma Blade's fixed now. Now, this was a big issue. It's tough to tell how Plasma Blade even was in the patch so far because the percentage damage was just wasn't working at all. Um, and also is making tanks run a bit even more rampant than they already were. So I'm excited to see how this change works. It was hard to get a feel for how the new Plasma Blade was because it just wasn't doing anything. Um, but now we'll be able to get an accurate assessment of how the Plasma Blade nerf is affecting the game. Are AD carry still able to put about a certain amount of damage? Is it being armor much better for solo lane? These are kind of questions we weren't able to answer yet, but now we'll be able to see with the fix to passive damage. Uh, substitution, fix an issue like target yourself. I've never seen this, but it sounds hilarious. Uh, they fixed Ferocious Steel, also wasn't working in this patch. And they fixed an issue with Warlock's Aegis that was causing towers to break the spell shield. I've never noticed this, but I'm glad to see it, I guess. Like, it's pretty cool that, <laughs> I mean, it's good that they fixed something like this, uh, I've never noticed this issue personally though, but glad to see it's out of the game. Boris's Lumberjack skin has been fixed. I've lost man many elos to this bug, at least about 100, so, you know, glad to see it, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Nothing we can do about it. Uh, Gideon, Torn Space Fix an issue called Gideon to not re-enter his portal. I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to. It could be him going through his own portal again, because uh, I think Gideon is meant to be able to do that. If he uses his portal, comes back to the entrance and jumps into it again, I think he should be able to travel again, but it might just be fixing the bug where sometimes your portal doesn't work. And if it's that one, I'm very, very happy because that bug is really problematic for Gideon and makes his E feel very inconsistent when you try to use it quickly, especially. And I think it was more of an issue in this patch. I feel like I was having it happened more often, so glad to see that they've already addressed that. They've already fixed Greystone's White Tiger skin. I think this was on Reddit like yesterday, so that's super fast turnover. I mean, I guess it was just you know ticking on textures, but <laughs> you know, either way, glad to see that they're already fixing these problems. Um, fixing issues like Moto's ultimate to be cast as midair, never seen it again, but it sounds awesome. So, tragic, a tragic loss for the game, really. And uh, fix an issue with Pacing Shot was not breaking spell shield. I've actually seen this before, but I feel like it was still doing damage, so I kind of thought maybe it was just meant to go through. You know, it's a piercing shot, you know, but I guess you know that now they've just uh, clarified that and it works correctly. So now we're in balance. 
Uh, this one's a real beefer. Lots of itemization changes here, especially for tanks. Lots of hits on support items. Um, in a way that doesn't really affect supports, I feel like a lot of these changes are more aimed at the solo lane, actually, where... And a little bit of jungle, where white items are getting very heavily abused because of the large amount of stats they provide. Obviously, supports do not get a lot of gold generation right now. Scrying Stone is their only option when it comes to receiving gold. So uh, the support items are very cheap, and they were giving a lot of stats as a result. To make up for that fact, the supports don't get a lot of gold. The problem is, when the support items are very cheap and they give a lot of stats, everybody else wants them. Um, so it's very problematic, especially for solo lane items like uh, EOT, Miracles, BUTD, these items are all getting very, very heavily abused in the solo lane right now. So a lot of these changes are actually aimed at lowering the regen these items provide, so they're not as good laning choices. And it's kind of stats that don't actually really affect support because of the uh, low gold generation, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you're not getting support items at a very fast pace anyway. You're kind of stuck on haste boots for a long time. You maybe get your first item as lane phase is ending. So the mana regen and the health regen aren't as applicable in the role anyway. So while these changes do make you feel like, oh, support's getting a big nerf. This isn't fair. Like, solo loaders are the one abusing it. I think a lot of the support items will feel roughly the same because what they did do is leave a lot of the actives intact and the same. And I think the actives are what make those items really shine and get supports a lot of playmaking. So I'm glad that uh, SMS took this uh, angle where uh, they mainly nerfed uh, the items regen, which is really what certain laners were taking advantage of. So let's take a look at what they've done. Uh, we got a buff to Boots of the Hunt here. I think this is kind of nice. Uh, I think wares as well also feel quite weak. It's a very, very low amount of uh, magic pen, so I might like to see those buffed as well. I feel like wraps are just way better than the other two. Um, but I mean, it's nice to see that they feel like these are underperforming, so they're just increasing attack speed a bit. I did feel like they didn't really do anything. It felt like a very, very low amount. Uh, maybe they could be a bit too good now, but we'll see how it feels. Uh, Voracious Steel buffs. I think this is really good, at least when I was playing a lot of AD carry. I felt like Voracious Steel wasn't really giving enough. It feels like they're very, very light with how much life steal they give items, which I think is okay. But compared to other MOBAs, it's felt very awkward, uh, especially as an ADC, like not having great life steal options to kind of keep you on the map. It felt like even if you got chunked out, you couldn't really like sustain with something like a plasma blade if that was your only choice. So I like seeing the life steal buffs. It's a little bit nice. A little bit buff to the overshield as well. Actually, it's a nerf to the overshield. I thought it was a buff, but uh, since they've actually um, nerfed it here a little bit, I think mean, it doesn't say that here. I thought it was actually a buff, but uh, I guess yeah, the increase to life steal is really really nice. I think the item overall got better. So even if the overshield was nerfed a little bit, I think it's a little bit of a rarer scenario anyway. And increasing the life steal raises the amount of time that you're more likely to have the overshield. So. So I think overall it's a very good change to the item, it makes it a lot better. Uh, King's Castle, dash range is doubled actually. Like this kind of change is really, really interesting. I feel like King's Castle already, I was kind of trying, appreciating it more as an item in general and liking what it did. I didn't really build it much at the beginning, but as I started seeing people build it and build it myself later, I think it actually looks a lot better. Doubling the dash range makes it very interesting. Um, this could definitely be seen a lot more on things like Sparrow and Murdoch and even Twin Blast could like use it. There's no reason not to build it if it's a good item, but also it can affect things like Greystone. He already has a gap closer, right? But if you give him another 12, 100 unit gap closer, he could suddenly get in the backline even easier than he could already. Um, King's Castle actually gives very, very solid stats for something like a solo laner or a Greystone, like a physical power bruiser. It gives lifesteal and, uh, you know, a large amount of power. And I feel like, you know, these kind of heroes don't mind that at all. And as well, like, you know, let's say you're like behind your team and you're, or your team's running with you. Like you can even have some sort of big tank team and you're all just like King's Castle next to each other, just dashing after people. And, you know, you just get like this huge like healing for, for like everybody because you're all just stood on top of each other. I could definitely see this am being really good on, on, you know, a lot of melee bruises, even things like Severog, like, nobody's ever going to be like, oh no, another dash, that's going to suck for me, like, everybody loves dashing if they're melee, so I think the change to this item is very interesting, and it could definitely see a lot more play, especially in things like the Sertalin. Uh, AI ammunition, increasing the cost a little bit, giving a little more physical power, I guess I just want to delay the spike the AD carries get a bit, maybe AI ammo was overperforming a bit, I don't really see the point of this change personally, but, I mean, you know, making items a bit more expensive and giving them a bit stronger, maybe they like that, I feel that's kind of an issue the game has has right now, to be honest, is that completed items are very, very expensive. So I feel like this is kind of going in the wrong direction for what I'd like to see, but uh, they probably have their reasons for making this change and maybe AI ammo is just doing too well right now. Adrenaline boost. So it's just a trigger to experimental change on carry attack speed items, help the position better be more elusive in the game show. Skirmishes, spend more chains coming in the future. I think this is kind of cool, giving adrenaline boost for the move speed. Uh, a flat amount is very strong, to be honest. Uh, this is like, a th uh, you know, three tenths of boots. Um, Almost like level one boots on its own, so it's actually a pretty big amount. Uh, comparing something to like League of Legends, like these kind of things exist on the you know the zeal items in League or Yasha and Dota, that these things provide movement speed as well and make carries generally faster. So it's kind of continuing that trend in MOBAs where yeah, carries they don't get tankier, but they get faster, they they get to dodge more. Like that's kind of like the trade off, right? And it's like it's increasing the skill cap of the role. The only issue I have with this is I think Adrenaline Boost is already seeing play a lot of melee characters because of the strength of the active crits in general, which is very, very good. 
and the A-boost active was very, very powerful. Characters like Boris, characters like Greystone. Like, these characters are already kind of using adrenaline boost anyway, and I think this is just a really big buff to that kind of idea. This could be like a support item issue, you know, where you want to make this item really nice for carries, but then suddenly all the melees are building it and they're running around with 30 extra boost speed. I could already see this being really, really annoying on something like Greystone. So it wouldn't surprise me to see adrenaline boost getting a lot more play in this patch, in the solo lane especially. But it's a nice buff for carries, I guess. Adds a little bit more skill cap, you know, raises the ceiling a bit, um, and gives them more options to play team fights, you know, especially with things like King's Castle changes. Just some nice changes for carries overall, giving them a bit more uh, agency in team fights in the middle lane game. Inertia wraps. Now, I was saying earlier, wraps are really, really good. Probably the best boots. Tenacity is really, really strong. The stats are really good. Uh, they've actually rechanged or, you know, moved the stats from being all physical armor to half and half physical energy. I think it's a nice change. It makes bruises a little bit less bulky in the early game in, you know, the physical way, but gives a little bit more energy armor. It's kind of like just lowering the amount of physical armor available in the early game and just giving 80 carries, I guess, a bit more space to deal with kind of bruises early because it was very, very easy to itemize armor, but quite difficult to itemize energy armor right now, especially in green cards. So I think it's a nice change that just gives it, it kind of moves the stats around, gives some people a little bit more of an easier time, like 80 carries. And it also is like a little bit of a help with for junglers with dealing with mid, for solo laners with dealing with energy solo laners. It just makes the wraps a bit of a better choice in some situations and then just kind of like pulls back on the amount of armor that you could obtain in the early game. Okay, so Titan's Maul. Uh, this is the end that builds into Fist of the Titan. I think this is written incorrectly. This should be physical power. Um, physical power has gone from 18 to 20. Health reduced with 380, 375. Removed health regen. So uh, this is kind of like in the line of that, like removing health regen accessibility from the early lane phase, I guess. This is just moving around some stats because they changed this to the title, made it a bit more expensive. So they're just giving the upgrade path a little bit more stats. I guess it lost five HP, but you know, I mean, this overall, this change doesn't really make any difference. Uh, Fist of the time come to 3,400. Uh, physical power increased by 40. Health reduced from 490 to 400. So this is the beginning of the tank itemization changes. They're really trying to pull back on the amount of raw stats that tats, stat, tanks can get. Um, they're definitely just ending up too strong right now in the late game, I think. I definitely agree with the angle that they're taking in that regard. Um, I guess it's another little bit of a nerf to Severog, I guess, because he really likes Fist of the Titan and the cost has gone up a bit. Honestly, I don't think many other characters are building this item. Uh, most people choose to go Plasma Blade instead of uh, T-Fist, so it's mainly just a hit on Severog, I guess, which uh, given that they're already balancing him as well, I'm not sure it was really necessary, but I guess it's just, you know, in line with like reducing the stats that all the tank items give so that, you know, it, it just kind of like fell into that package of removing stats from everything. So I guess I'm not surprised to see the changes, but I do feel like the item wasn't being built that much anyway, so I'm not sure if it specifically needed to get hit. Here it is again. We have nerfs to photosynthetic symbio, losing the defensive stats in our energy armor and physical armor. The health remains the same. The passive is the same, uh, but the lowering the base health regen you get. Again, just so, you know, they're just lowering regen across the board. Regen was just too cheap. I don't really feel like regen on green items was too much of a problem, but I guess they're just trying to hit everything at once uh, just to make it a bit more reasonable, I suppose. Uh, here's change to mana lens. You might be surprised actually, but I don't really like this change. It's obviously a very big buff to mana lens, but I feel like it doesn't really address kind of the issue that mid lane has where it's very, very difficult to get off the ground just because of how long it takes to get to your first item. Mana lens is pretty much the rush for everybody for me right now. Uh, there's no mana regen in blue, so you're pretty much reliant on just building a large mana pool and using magician. Energy power has gone up, mana has gone down. Honestly, this probably ends up being about the same because of the passive mana lens. Uh, this looks like a buff, but they're actually keeping it probably quite similar because you probably, you know, you get 2% of your mana. So if you're losing 84, I guess maybe it's a little bit more energy. No, no, I mean, I guess it's a little bit more energy power. Honestly, maybe like four or five more energy power. And obviously doubling the cooldown reduction is very, very large. But I feel like it kind of keeps this issue that mid lane has where your strength is all in your first item. It takes a very long time to get to mana lens, mainly because of the build path. It costs 1550 or whatever to get to mana matrix. And it's another 1450 on top of that that you have to stay for to try and get to mana lens. Um, I guess increasing the, the strength that may just have a one item is kind of nice, but I feel like the bigger issue is getting to that item. So while it's nice to see a buff, I feel like this isn't kind of the direction the mid lane needs. I don't know if mana lens needed to get any better, but maybe it was underperforming, so they wanted to just give it some love. Um, but it is a little bit worrying. And honestly, things like cooldown reduction getting increased, while it seems like a buff on paper, if you only have one item and it's just mana lens, you don't really have the mana or like, <laughs> I don't know, you're not, you don't really have the value, I think, to spam abilities this often. So you could have to go like, oom a bit more often, just like throwing out abilities constantly. 20% CDR is not super valuable when the cooldowns aren't that strong, but it is obviously a buff either way. But overall, I feel like this change wasn't really necessary. I would much rather have seen, honestly, the item get a bit weaker and the costs go down, so it's more accessible early, and you're able to translate an early laning advantage into an actual significant item sooner. But clearly they want to go the other way, and we'll just see how this plays out, and if it makes mid too strong. The one item spike would definitely get a lot bigger this patch. Uh, if you're rushing mana lens, it's definitely stronger, but we'll just see what happens. Uh, changes to Nirvana Jewel here. Cost goes up, energy power goes up, 
Now it gives 10% CDR. Mana reduced by quite a lot. But overall, I think this is a nice change from the Mana Jewel. I do like this item, but I just feel like the stats weren't really good enough before to warrant it. But actually, given that it now has CDR and it gives 70 energy power, which is kind of more in line with everything else, I think it's actually a good change. It synergizes well with your Mana Lens because it gives you all the bulk mana as well. So technically, it's giving you like, you know, additional 2%. So you're getting another uh, 8 ability power on top of that. So realistically, you know, it's giving you 78. So that's pretty nice. I definitely like this change. I can see it being built as a sixth item a little bit more often. Didn't really feel like a great choice before, but with the 10% CDR and the increased stats, I think it's a little bit nicer. Here we start getting into the, you know, the beefy stuff. Plasma Shield, this builds into U Mantle. They've actually uh, removed the physical armor entirely from this line and it increased the energy armor. I think this is a really good change. U Mantle was in a weird place where it was kind of like the only energy armor option, but it wasn't a heavy energy armor choice. Everybody would build it because it just gave insane stats. They've actually reduced the cost a bit. Uh, increase the health that it gives here, and then load the health that it gives here. So you get a bigger spike while building a U-Mantle. That's pretty nice. And also, it's a more focused choice. It's a more active counter option. You think, oh, I need energy armor, I'm gonna build U-Mantle. You don't think, I wanna get tankier, I'm gonna build U-Mantle, you know? Um, they don't have the, uh, I don't know why it says passive or stuff before, it's cooldown, because obviously it doesn't have a cooldown if it's a passive. Um... I guess it could, but you know what I mean. It's an active. They increased the active cooldown. You mantle acted very, very strong. I don't really know if it needed a nerf, to be honest. Uh, at least in the cooldown department. Maybe just the effect itself is a bit strong, but um, overall, I, th I think it's fine changes. I like that they're pushing the item to be a bit more focused and not just a general option. It just gave good stats before, but it was like mediocre stats. But now it gives a lot of energy armor. And I mean, honestly, Plasma Shield isn't that expensive, so you can even do things like you mantle plus Plasma Shield for the mid game and just bulk out on energy armor, like if the enemy countess is fed, and you'll take way less damage. Like, even though like, it only builds a DU mantle, you can stack these two and be very, very effective, and then kind of trade it out later. But um, I think this is actually a very big change. Like, I think Plasma Shield got a very large buff here, um, and it might go a bit under the radar. So if you're a tank player, and you see the enemy mid is fed, try going like U mantle Plasma Shield, and just see if you can tank through the game. Because I could definitely see it happening, and I think tank Plasma Shield as an item has just got a lot better here. It's kind of weird for like a build path item to be very effective stack wise normally you have to wait to complete an item to get a real impact but the stats here are actually very very strong so i would definitely take a look at maybe getting these and even stacking them honestly in some scenarios like i think plasma shield go very very good uh so here's the edges nerfs actually not too big a deal just the build path cooldown reduction went down physical armor went up this is just some like reorganizing i guess for lane phase these stats are a bit more relevant for lane phase i guess so if you're rushing edges which i've definitely seen some solo laners do in some matchups um it'll probably feel a bit better now to be getting this it's also still even though they increase the cost it's still quite cheap this is definitely an item that's attainable around first raptors although saying that raptors are not eight minutes now so maybe it's not i don't know um but either way not too much of a difference in this item just giving you a bit more re le relevant laning stats 10 5 percent cdr doesn't really matter it's kind of weird to be 15% anyway so they didn't touch uh, edges itself except for the gold cost so it should feel about the same uh bail armor cost reduced health reduced and physical armor reduced uh didn't lose much armor at all to be honest lost quite a large chunk of health but also got a little bit cheaper i think again this is kind of just like it was one of these items where everybody built it if you wanted to get tankier it was very very accessible uh the active is very very powerful um but basically it's removing a lot of the tank stats across the board uh this is pretty much a staple of any tank build so hitting this one makes sense but they did lower the cost a bit and getting it earlier is very nice for something like a jungler so i guess honestly it's a little bit of a nice buff to junglers where uh they have the option to get bail armor you know maybe like one two camps earlier which lets them accelerate their farm a little bit faster uh but overall definitely a big hit to the item um and just part of this process of bringing tanks and tank items a bit more in line uh here we're going to start seeing the support item changes a little bit of a nerf to substitution just lots of stats i haven't really seen this item built you know since the uh the great tyranny of 0.20 we try not to talk about that um so i don't really know how impactful it is but i guess it's just again removing tank stats across the board uh robe of miracles so here's the beginning of the big changes for support items now once i said like i said earlier you have to understand these items changes are not aimed at supports a lot of these stats are not relevant to supports health regen and mana regen they sound nice but to be honest you're not getting them in lane and that's when it's at its most impactful most support items are coming in for supports i would say you know between 12 and 15 minutes and by that point lane phase is kind of like gone through itself you know you're reaching second raptors at that point so lane phase isn't as relevant so we see a health reduction on miracles and health regen goes from five to one That's obviously a fifth of what it is now But that's because these kind of items were being abused by solo laners having five health regen in lane Just removed a lot of the interactivity from lane. It just made the lane very very boring um, So pretty much everybody was rush rushing these white items on the solo lane and they're just trying to hit that So it's a little bit less impactful here. We see the changes to time bender. This is the essence of timeline Same, you know thought process EOT was probably the biggest defender honestly right now in the game for solo lane Everybody was rushing EOT. It just made the lane just boring as hell 
battle, you just just grab EOT and then you just sit there and ignore all the damage, push out waves, try and roam. I think EOT and I as an item is kind of cool, but it was definitely giving way too much regeneration stats. Like I said, again, supports don't really care about this kind of thing, realistically. Like, of course, it's nice to have a bit more mana regen out of lane, but it's not really something you focus on at that point. You're more focused on, you know, the actives that you could buy for support. So a lot of these changes don't actually hit support that much at all. It's mainly just to keep solo lane in the line. Again, here we just see more changes to the different support item lines. Just mana regen going down. Honestly, some of these changes, I guess you could argue, could be a bit more relevant to supports. But again, I don't think they're really getting these items realistically uh, that early in the game and lane phase. Like, regen across the board is just getting nerfed here on all the white items. Like, it, they were just giving way too much. So as you can see, pretty much it's a fifth on all the regen that these items give. But again, it's not really supports for <laughs> It's mainly so and it's abusing this. But obviously, with the way support income is right now, the items have to be cheap. They're just making them less wanted or they don't look as good for like a solo lane. Because right now, they're seeing like, oh, there's a bunch of health regen, there's a bunch around the region there's really cheap tank stats i'm gonna buy that item but instead they're making that decision oh i'm a solo laner i want to support my team with miracles so i'm gonna buy miracles you're not buying it to just afk and lane and ignore it while they're whatever they're doing so definitely lowering the stats and making it an active choice to support your team as opposed to a choice that supports your selfishness or like your, yourself and your team you know they're kind of pigeonholing these items into if you want to build them you're not getting the stats you're just going to get the active and i think that's a really good change and overall i don't think it should affect supports too much at all so here we see big changes to matter limiter. I actually think this is really cool. I think this item is pretty neat, but it wasn't really built right now because it didn't really offer much in the way of stats. I think the active, or oh, the passive, sorry, is kind of interesting where it probably slows on your abilities. Uh, nice buff to mech core will make the lion feel a lot better. Uh, the fact that this gives mana and energy power is kind of good as well because it means it synergizes mana lens, which is pretty much a staple of every mage build just because, you know, you can't build mana regen, so you want to build a large mana pool. So, uh, oh, 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 I think it's a very interesting item. I might mess around with it as like a fifth or sixth item a few times in this patch. Uh, I just think it's cool they're giving buffs to these items to trying to make them a bit more accessible. It's even nice for things like Muriel, I guess, maybe, who uh, does benefit a lot from energy power and might benefit from having a bit of a bigger slow, you know, this kind of thing. I would say it's a great Muriel item, but maybe it's a nice little, you know, option for her now. It gives a little bit of mana, gives a little bit of health, gives some energy power. Overall, just a good change, making kind of an underused item a bit more accessible. More regen changes here. These are all, again, just white items getting hit. Regen's going down across the board, just so it can't be abused by solo laners, pretty much. Um, I've seen devs in the Discord talking about how the regen was definitely off. I think they, what probably happened is they were trying to do H, or like regen per five, and then they, they did like the one instead. Like it was meant to be two per five, um, but instead they made it like two per one, you know? So, so I think it's probably just an error in that regard, especially considering it's gone down by five across the board. I think they probably made an active decision at some point to change it from, how change regen from being being per five to per one, I guess because it was a bit more obvious how often it was impacting you and they probably just forgot to change the numbers because it is literally specifically divided by five across the entire board. They're definitely just balancing in that regard. Uh, gate scroll cost reduction here to 300. This change is really interesting. I think gate scrolls are actually really good and quite hard to use. I think making the 300 makes them a lot more accessible. You already kind of have this like thought in your head of like if you're gate scrolling to a wave and you get like, you know, 200 gold and experience that you would have normally got, the gate scroll basically costs 200. So you paid 200 gold for a bunch of experience. Now the gate scroll is 300. That trade is even better. If you do the same thing, you're paying 100 gold for a bunch of experience. So I like the change to gate scroll in general. I think it's a pretty cool item, but I think it's nice to see it getting changes. I do wonder if it was something picked up a bit more often. People just sitting on them in lanes so they could get to, you know, other lanes to help. One of the issues with it, I guess, is that you can only TP to allied towers. If you could TP to wards or something, it might have an even bigger impact. Um, but I think it's a good change overall. And I like that they have noticed that people aren't really using it when it is kind of a cool item and they're lowering the cost of it. Uh, Scrying stone a stone of sustenance. Uh, Scry Stone lost middle region here. Same problem or same thing, I think. And actually they nerfed Stone of Sustenance uh, a little bit on its the flat resources it gives, but they lowered the cost to 500. I think Stone is kind of interesting. The regen is kind of nice. They actually didn't hit the regen quite, or it didn't hit the regen on Stone at all, to be honest. It can honestly be seen, I think, as a support item now. You might be, you know, you might mark rush a Stone of Sustenance or two, just to give you a little bit more regen in the early game if you do want that. This is a very, very accessible item now if you are someone who likes regen in lane, especially for supports, you know, 500 gold is nowhere near as hard to get as 800 or, you know, building a path to support item. I wouldn't say this item got any better for mid. I was trying it at mid before, but I think this change is just very bad for mid. Honestly, I think these stats are really low. <laughs> like, I like that they make this item a bit more accessible as an early game choice, but I think it doesn't give enough relevant stats right now, and especially that they lower these to 50. The item's giving you pretty much just regen, which is okay, and maybe that's what it wants to be, but I think it's just not going to give enough value right now to uh, truly have an impact as an item. I think it's a cool item, and um, I would like to see it continue 
continue to get changed. So here we are on hero changes. They say here that the fixing heroes being able to build a basic, basic attack carry is not fit in the specific role. Obviously, this is aimed at Muriel. Been pretty problematic in the offlane and as an AC. Not played properly as much as she should be, especially post buff, but they're obviously talking about her basically. These two changes, oh my god, I love them so much. Base AD increases for Gideon and Bellica. Increasing their basic attack timer. I assume this means attack speed, um, but I'm not entirely sure. It might just be the length of the animation. I need to feel it in game, but I'm so happy to see like 5 AD on mid is so nice. I mean, it's 4, I guess, but uh, last hitting in mid is very, very difficult right now. So I'll welcome any changes to make it a little bit easier because the AD values were just so low. So it's nice to see this little buff. I imagine they had that in mind, you know, last hitting in mid being very, very difficult compared to other roles right now, especially with no early game items. Like you could start pistol, but then you're just burning gold, you know? So it's nice to see this little change making that a little bit easier. Uh, they actually increased the height of seismic assault here. The only relevance I can see for this is in the Bellica Gideon matchup. Obviously Gideon, when he uses his ult, he wants to blink in the air and ult off the ground, which makes it a little bit harder to hit and do damage to. This gives Bellica more windows to punish that and still stun him out of the air. I don't know how, like 260 is kind of, a, I can't really picture this in my head. I guess it's like <laughs> a third, uh, a half a King's Castle. I don't know. It doesn't seem that big, but I guess there'll be times where before Bellica wouldn't be able to stun Gideon out of the air. Now she will. Gideon players have to be a little bit more careful. This is the only real usage I see for this change. So maybe they just felt like Bellica should have a slightly better matchup against Gideon because obviously she has, she has quite a hard lane phase against him. So maybe they're just giving her a bit more utility in that matchup in fights because I just can't see any other place where this is relevant. So I assume that's the only reason they made this change. Uh, here we go. Muriel, attack speed per level reduced. Basic attack timer increased. Again, gave her some physical damage. Uh, this is actually really nice for Muriel. Obviously they're nerfing her attack speed per level to kind of limit her out of the ADC role, but this is actually a really big buff for her lane phase because right now she's the only range support basically other than Bellica, whereas Bellica's a bit cheesier, but Muriel as a support is very, very reliant on aggressive play to be able to dominate the lane phase because most of the time she's against either a Narbash or a Steel. So abusing them in lane is pretty much her big advantage. So giving her a 5 AD buff actually is probably quite relevant. You know, this stacks up very quickly. You hit them five times and you do 25 more damage. And in the early game, that's quite significant. So actually it's probably a nice change for Muriel. She's kind of getting better with each of these patches. So I think it's, you know, only a matter of time, honestly. I already see her played a lot more. You know, we have like this Cogmore Lulu equivalent. Everybody's played Twin Blast Muriel. You build Sirens, cool. You know, you stack some support items and then you just you have a shield on like a five second cooldown like her E is very very powerful right now she's definitely getting a lot of buffs and I think you know it's only a matter of time honestly before she becomes a bit more of a staple I think her impact is actually getting a lot higher and I think uh we could be honestly it's a little bit worrying because we could be in the danger of like some sort of Muriel meta arising because her cooldowns and team fights in the middle late game right now are super insane and the shields and, and utility she provides are kind of like you know feeling like it's starting to get over the edge so it could be a bit worrying I guess we'll see where it goes I think you know it's a nice little buff to her early game, which is already very skill based because, you know, you have to kind of, especially in like a Narbash matchup, for example, you have to be very careful of Thunk because you'll just die, but you also do want to play aggressive. So this is rewarding players who are a little bit more aggressive with her, which is a little bit more damage. And finally, oh, here's the beefy one. We've all been waiting for it. We've all been looking for it. It's the Severog nurse. It says, as a scaling offensive tank, Severogs have a harder time surviving the early game. It should be at the strongest point later in the game. Currently, we're seeing him not only survive early game trades, but outdo all the offliners. Definitely a big problem. Reducing his base defenses, increasing his siphon cooldown early, should hopefully reduce his early game power without affecting his scaling potential in the late game. Uh, so we see like a little bit of a base physical energy armor nerf, probably not too relevant most of the time. Stacks per tier increase, so it takes him longer to hit those stacks in the early game. It's just 40 to 50, that's the only change here. So it's just a little bit longer before he hits that first tier, pushing back his power spike a little bit. Siphon cooldown increased from 5 to 9, 8, 7, 6. Honestly, I worry this is a little bit too much. This is mainly aimed at solo lane, not really an issue if you're playing jungle Severog. You're probably not going to notice this change too much, especially if you're still maxing Q first. It's Especially for solo lane, this is a big hit. It could be the death of solo lane Severog. I'm not necessarily trying to overreact here, but this is all of his trading power in the early game. I don't know if they needed to crush his Q this hard. He was definitely very dominating in the solo lane, but I think there were other ways to handle it. They weren't necessarily just kind of like forcing him out of the role, but it could be that they felt like solo lane Severog was just too powerful. They wanted to keep his sacks balanced around the jungle. So they're just trying to like keep him out of that role entirely. That's kind of what this change feels like. Cause I think it, it's definitely a really, really big hit for his solo lane trading and his stacking and so in general. Obviously, when it comes to camps in the jungle, nine seconds is like the time it takes for you to run from one camp to the other. So while you might be a bit slower if you're spamming Q on the camp, you still should still have your Q available for every time you want to last hit the camp. Um, but it's definitely a big DPS left in his early game. It would definitely slow down his clear. I don't think I don't know if 
this change needed to happen. Obviously, I'm a big advocate of Severo being too strong. I think he definitely needed some changes, but I don't know if this was the angle to take because it might just slow him down way too much and it's just going to push him into a point of like, he can't get going at all. And I don't think that's really fair either, especially in a patch where they hit all this tank itemization. Like all these tank item nerfs are nerfs to Severo as well, you know? So he's taking a lot of hits in this patch. Uh, we'll see where he goes, but this is the change I love the most, which is a nerf to subjugate, reducing the range from 1800 to 1650 units. At least in mid lane right now, Severo is an insane presence because of the range of his E. He can throw his E from like an E on away. There's not much you can do about it. I was pushing for a range nerf. This is a really small one, but it's a nice nerf nonetheless. And I'm glad to see they're hitting him in this way. This is what I'd much rather see is the reduction of Severog's utility a little bit. I would have liked to maybe see instead of this, like an increase on his right mouse button cooldown, just so he has a little bit less mobility. But overall, this is the angle they decided to take and we'll see if it's too much. I'm sure if Severog starts plummeting, uh, SMS will be more willing to give him buffs again. They don't seem to, you know, be have any issue with like, uh, <laughs> so far at least with uh, making changes in the other direction if they feel like they went too hard. So uh, I guess we could just, you know, hope that if this is too much for Severog, while I am glad to see Nurse for sure, uh, if this is too much, I would like to see them bring him back a bit. I, I just worry this siphon change is a bit too much, but uh, I guess we'll just see how it plays out throughout the patch. So yeah, that was uh, the patch review of patch 0.3.1. I think this is a great patch. Hit a lot of what I didn't like about the game, honestly, right now. Really nice item balance pass, I think, and I'm just very happy with what they've done with this patch. So big shout out to SMS uh, for getting this one done. Thank you guys for checking out my patch review. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll try to do this content a little bit more often for the upcoming patches. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to get my hands on and try this patch. So make sure to check out me streaming it. I'm live every day. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video or on my stream. Peace.